recently you made a post on on your Instagram and I'm just going to say this right away. It blew my head off. I was like, what? And you were talking about for judo, investing in Ewaza is far more important because, and you talked about the investment analogy. It's going to give you far more returns. So uh, if you can repeat in a, in a short way what you said and, and just explain to the audience why is that? And hopefully we can, I have some questions about it myself. So if you can please talk first. I will say this, I have no clue the exact post that you're talking about, but I do know my philosophical approach as it applies to judo. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I make a lot, you know, I make a lot of posts on, on social media. So I have something called G-A-T-N. Mm-hmm. That's the system, that's the overarching conceptual framework that we utilize inside of the dojo and the one that I utilize when it comes to my, my clientele. That's grip, attack, transition, newaza. Grip, attack, transition, newaza. Now, anytime you see a judo match, the one thing that has to happen is the two competitors have to what? They have to grip. Between the two competitors, somebody has to what? Attack. The biggest hole or room or opportunity for improvement is in the transition space and thus also in the newaza space so when you look at the amount of training that one does we train a lot on gripping because we have to do it we train a lot on attacking because we're penalized if we don't do it and then most of us don't train a lot of transition and Nawaza becomes optional because there's no penalty for not doing it. So when you look at, if, if there's any area of my game that I can have a great amount of improvement, that area would be one, and the one thing that everybody has to do, which is not optional, which is gripping. And then the other area, which nobody has to do, which is Nawaza. If you cannot win the grip fight, the proclivity or propensity towards you being the one to be able to attack is super low. If you can win the grip fight, then your ability to attack first is super high. The quality of the attack is what we all practice the most. When it comes to competitive judo, the quality of the attack is not as important as the attack in and of itself, meaning if you practice Uchimata and you have a wonderful Uchimata, Chatty, I wish. And I practice Seonagi and my Seonagi sucks, but I I can grip fight better than you can and I can do my suck ass Seonagi eight times and you can't do your Uchimata once, you will lose the what? For passivity. You'll lose for for passivity. And then every time we hit the ground, if you ball up in a ball or you lay flat and I'm the one forcing the Nawaza exchange, you will never have any what? Uh, chance in winning in the Nawaza? Chance, what we call chance time. Mm-hmm. You'll never have any time. What Judo, is chance time? No, what I mean, yes, you won't have a chance because you won't have the time. Mm. Right, so my me me taking the time away removes your chance. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Ah, so for example, like uh, when someone um, is up by a wazari, let's say, and they do a good attack and they fall flat, the other guy who's losing falls flat, the other guy tries to like look like he's engaging in Nawaza, trying to flip him over. He's just wasting time in reality. Mm. He's wasting time. Okay, I get it. But your your option at that level is to try to lay flat and hope that the other person can't move you so that you can stand up. Mm. Instead of creating a situation where you could play from an offensive position and always have an opportunity to win no matter where you are. Mm. It takes just as much time for me to grab you, roll you, and turn you and pin you as it does for me to grip you, move you, and attack. Mm. People think it... The only time Nawaza changes 
within each weight class. And I just had a, a conversation with a high level, a high A level referee this past week because he was calling me about why he calls Mate early with heavyweights and not early with lightweights. And I agreed with him. I said, because within every weight class, the ability to do Nawaza changes because the anthropometrics of the competitors change. Mm -hmm. The arm length, the, the weight, the, the, um, the, the leg length, the weight changes. So as when you get up to 100 plus, that is hard to roll over a 100 plus person. Mm -hmm. So the, and let me use Teddy Renner as an example. I love Teddy Renner's judo. I abhor and detest this one thing that Teddy Renner does. Teddy Renner does sumigaish, and then as soon as he misses sumigaish, he rolls to his what? Stomach. That pisses me off. Because if you're going to do sumigaish, which is a sacrifice technique, and you're going to grip and you're going to attack, the transition for Sumigaish is to move into Newaza to then have some type of high ricotta movement or some butterfly guard techniques. Mm. If Teddy Renner works on his butterfly guard or his play from the bottom, when he misses Sumigaish, he then puts himself into a great position in order to attack Newaza. But if he misses Sumigaish and on, 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 and as soon as he misses, he rolls and somebody catches him in his neck, he's going to get tapped. But Teddy Renner is 285 pounds, 300 pounds. The ability to roll over a 300 pounder when they are flat is super, super difficult, especially when you're tired. However, it can be done, and we know it can be done because we've seen it done in Greco and freestyle wrestling. We've mm -hmm. seen it done by Alexander Karelin, and we've seen it done by other heavyweights. It's mm -hmm. just that most heavyweights don't make an investment in Nawaza so they don't have any return on their investment. Mm -hmm. And because they don't make that investment, the the propensity towards calling Mate for referees is high because they don't see heavyweights investing in such a game. Mm. Uh, let me uh, let me refresh a bit your memory. Maybe you can remember a little bit more about the post you said. Uh, in touch, you were talking about in touch you was on my return. It was like maybe twenty percent or even uh, and a lot less. The Nawaza is forty percent. So why would I put my energy more in the only to stand up, you remember? Correct, and and and, I, and I'm answering that for you, and I'm do, I'm saying mm -hmm. that because it's because one, the grip fighting will shut down the opportunity for, to attack. Mm. Number two, every mm -hmm. attack does not yield a score, but every attack yields a Nawaza opportunity. Okay, so my question is this: so should we focus like if you had the 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 three? Of the of the judo elements, gripping, uh, tachiwaza, newaza. Let me say, let me say this again before you answer the answer. Ask my question. I want you to let this, let this, um, let this pepper and season your question. Mm. Every attack provides a newaza opportunity. Mm. Okay, because you said like if I'm gonna invest in an athlete. And I want him to really um, invest in their Nawaza. I would take out with something like Uchimata, which takes a lot of years to develop. And also the transition to from Uchimata to Nawaza is really weak. There, there isn't one unless you do ensemble, going for a leg lock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, my question is, so now with like the three elements, the like gripping, obviously gripping is an art of its own. And that not, um, I would say like jujitsu and wrestling guys don't even know a thing about it. Uh, unless they truly experience it, they go and fight in judo. So between judo, uh, sorry, gripping, uh, throwing, and newaza, we, we should elevate the gripping and the newaza, and thirdly, uh, uh, invest in the throwing, or we should, uh, or do you see a different methodology of training? I don't, I don't understand. Like if, if I'm, if my return is more in newaza, as you said, forty percent rather than grip, uh, uh, sorry, throwing, then. Then should I structure my training differently, or should I uh, attack, uh, do a lot of more kumikata and then newaza? How how do you see things like happening differently? Okay, so here here let's. I want people to understand this, and I'm going to answer your question. Mm. What you're saying, what I'm saying, are two different things. You're saying throwing. I didn't say throwing that one time, did I? I said what? Attack. 
I said, okay, which is way different than a what? Throw. A throw. Every attack does not score. Sometimes I'm just attacking to knock the person down. Like when I mm. break up with two hands and I come through and I slice through the legs and knock the person flat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, not try- I'm not trying to throw the I'm not trying to throw them, but if I don't attack, if I don't do a good attack, I'm gonna get a Shido. So when it comes to Tachi Waza, let's take our let's let's remove ourselves out of the 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 throwing space. Let's move into the attacking space where throws are some of the attacks. Mm. Okay. Because we have we have we have Nage Waza, we have Ashiwaza, and then we have some attacks. Mm. All right, now, let me say this. If I want to stop you from attacking me, how do I do that? You over, you dominate the gripping. Dominate the gripping. So when I dominate the gripping, somebody has to attack. I can do a lousy attack over and over again when I have the grips, and then you get a Shido. Mm. Or you can try to do a bad attack off of my good grips and end up in a in a bad false position. Attack. You get false attack or you or you have a good enough attack and you get counter and then we go to the ground. If I've if I've had the dominant grip and you do a bad attack and we end up on the ground, I then need to maximize my grip fighting that I've had, my good grip mm-hmm. fighting exchange to then enter into Newaza. The ability for me to line up against everybody and be a better Tachiwaza player is a bad investment. Mm. It's not <laughs> there, there are going to be some people who are better Tachiwaza players than I am. Mm-hmm. What if they're better in Tachiwaza, what am I supposed to do? Just lose the match? No. So how do I win? You, strategically, through gripping, through maintaining distance, to I don't know, break their killer hand. I don't know. Right. That, that's it. And, and through, and by reducing the amount of time that we're doing what? Standing. Mm. If we're not standing, you can't what? I can't throw you if I'm sitting here. Throw. Can't, throw. Mm. can't throw. So when we look at the chronological landscape of a judo match, we look at four minutes. My job is to take as much as that four minutes as possible and make sure I'm dominating the grips and dominating on the ground and spending mm. less time in the area that you have to throw. Mm. 